Ford is the only full-line U.S. automaker employing advanced sustainable manufacturing. Ford's goal to drive the adoption of working with California for stronger. Ford's goal to achieving carbon neutrality globally by 2050. Sounds like we've got 28 years to party. Hello everyone and welcome. May I present to you in lieu of a greener future, the Ford Raptor R. So what's the opposite of green? Well, it's red, like red meat, which is appropriate because the Ford Raptor R was codenamed Carnivore. And suffice to say, it's got a bit of beef with a certain dinosaur that's been leaving marks in its territory. The heart of this meat eater is a fast pumping 5.2 liter supercharged V8 that probably goes through more dinosaurs on a single trip on the highway than a T-Rex could consume in a month. It's a very cool engine and I had the privilege of chatting with the V8 program supervisor as well as the Ford Performance chief engineer to learn all about this engine. The 5.2 liter originated with the Shelby GT350, where it was a high revving, flat plane crank, naturally aspirated V8 engine. It evolved to a cross plane crank and gained a supercharger for use on the Shelby GT500, significantly increasing power output. The latest version of this engine is now unique to the Raptor R. If you're wondering how much of that original GT350 engine remains in this new 5.2 liter, well, the intake valves. Oh, and the exhaust valves. So yeah, the valves. Aside from that, there really isn't any parts sharing, despite being based on the same engine block. The aluminum block and heads have additional cooling jackets and additional strengthening, such as the pan rail structure and other enhancements around the cylinder bores and cylinder head to withstand the added pressure from making so much more power thanks to that fat supercharger. 700 horsepower, that is, and 640 pound-feet of torque. You'll notice that's down on power versus the GT500, but up on torque, and the torque is available sooner. This mostly comes down to the characteristics of the vehicles. The GT500 being highly track capable, where high revving and high horsepower is rewarded, thus a 500 RPM higher redline than the Raptor R. Even still, 7000 RPM is quite high for a truck. And again, it's up on torque, which is what you'll want in this kind of vehicle as you're blasting through the dunes. Top speed isn't the priority here, nor are lap times. The torque curve is shifted lower by using a smaller supercharger pulley, bringing the diameter down from 80.1 to 74.5 millimeters. With about a 7% smaller diameter, this means the supercharger rotors spin faster in the Raptor than the GT500, assuming both engines are at the same RPM. With the new intake, new exhaust, smaller pulley, as well as updated fuel injection and ignition tuning, this translates to 640 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM, which means it's reaching peak torque 750 RPM sooner than the GT500 engine. So let's start at the front and work our way through the engine. Of course, we need air, lots of it. You want the air that reaches the engine to be as cold as possible, travel as short of a distance as possible, and have as little resistance as possible in getting there. That all starts with the intake, where you pull in air from up front. I'm told this relatively simple part went through about nine iterations before the final design you see here, with vertical supports in place ensuring the intake doesn't collapse onto itself as the massive suction from the engine tries to squeeze the intake closed. It then travels through a massive airbox, where the filter is housed, and then to the throttle body and into the supercharger. The supercharger is 2.65 liters in volume. It's a root-style supercharger designed by Eaton. The compressed air heats up, so it passes through an intercooler to cool it down before entering the cylinders with a boost pressure of 12 PSI. Interesting to note, Ford uses a decoupler pulley here for the supercharger. This device effectively acts like a one-way clutch. This device doesn't limit torque going to the supercharger rotors, but at low engine speeds, such as below 1500 RPM, it prevents crankshaft backlash from translating over to the supercharger rotors. In other words, it ensures torque only goes in one direction, even though there is an oscillation to the torque delivery from the crankshaft. This device provides two big benefits. It offers NVH improvements, meaning it keeps the unit quieter and with less vibration, 
and it offers improved durability. Solid pulleys put a lot of stress on the rotors, and this device helps remove that stress. Now, this is not to be confused with the supercharger bypass valve. This valve is used when the engine is operating at low loads, so the air skips past the rotors and goes directly through the intercoolers before entering the engine. This allows for more efficient operation, such as cruising on the highway. So, air goes in the engine, and kaboom, you have explosions within the cylinder. Worth noting, these engines use plasma spray cylinder liners. Ford's been using this tech in high volume since 2018, when the Mustang's 5.0 liter switched over to this technology. One of the big benefits of this plasma spray, aside from it being lightweight and super durable, is that it actually allows for more space within the cylinders, thus giving you a bit more displacement versus an iron sleeve. After combustion, the spent exhaust gases exit the engine. Instead of the header design that the GT500 engine is using, the Raptor R uses a cast stainless steel exhaust manifold. Durability is the name of the game here, since it's a truck application. It also has super tight packaging. Now, the downside of an application like a truck is that exhaust has to travel back a very long distance. That's added resistance, and there's really no way of avoiding this. Trucks are long. Mostly in jest, I asked, why not side pipes, like Mercedes does with the G-Wagon? Ford says they want to make sure the exhaust is above the vehicle's side rails since it's an off-road vehicle and the exhaust could get pinched. That nixes side pipes, though the G-Wagon is arguably an off-road vehicle and the exhaust does rest below the side rails. But despite their inherent capability, does anyone actually off-road their G-Wagon? Now, unlike the base Raptor's 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, which uses both port and direct fuel injection, the Raptor R is just using port injection. There are two pumps in the fuel tank to satiate the thirsty 5.2 liter, providing pressure to all eight injectors. The difference here really comes down to the charging systems. All of Ford's EcoBoost, meaning turbocharged engines, use direct injection. Direct injection lets you run smaller turbos, it gives you greater effective compression, and it gives you better control of transitions and fuel load. It's more efficient, more responsive, and has better power density. But I mean, this is a Raptor R. Fuel efficiency isn't the name of the game. It's literally designed to use fuel in abundance, not save it. Port injection satisfies the requirements and is fine to use with a lower compression ratio, supercharged engine. The cooling system for this engine is of course unique to the application versus the GT500. One change is the oil cooler is now a part of the engine's cooling circuit rather than a separate circuit like on the GT500. The lower radiator hose, feeding chilled coolant, has a split where some of the flow passes through a heat exchanger where the oil filter screws on, keeping oil temps in check. And unlike the GT500, which is a low vehicle designed for track use, the Raptor R has a deep sump oil pan. Why the deep sump? Well, this thing is designed to go off-road, and off-road it can be driving at all kinds of different angles, with various g-forces. The deep sump ensures that you have oil at the base of the pan, so that you don't starve the oil pickup. Though both the Raptor R and the GT500 have the same sump volume, a massive 11.5 quarts of 5W50 oil, and they also use the same oil filter. Why so much oil? Well, it's a truck application, a high horsepower application, and another consideration is that when you're driving these types of vehicles hard, at high RPM, you want to make sure that you don't have excessive aeration, basically bubbles forming within the oil. Oil is a great lubricant between metal parts. Air is not. Air is pretty crap at lubricating. So with the high sump volume, it gives more time for the bubbles to settle out before the oil is picked up from the base of the pan. A GT500, of course, has a very different oil pan design, where you're trying to ensure the oil that's experiencing super high g-forces on track is always covering your pickup tube so you're never starving for oil. So let's bring up the rather large elephant in the room, the Ram TRX. It does technically have more power, but only slightly, just two more horsepowers and 10 more torques. Ford, why not give it another three horsepower for a subtle jab? But with only a two horsepower difference, we're talking about less than a third of a percent. The weather forecast will make a bigger difference than that. And also keep in mind engines can be marketed below their true rated power. It seems Ford simply didn't want to initiate a horsepower war, and I kind of respect that. 
When I asked the engineers what they were proud of, they said this truck isn't about 0 to 60 times or quarter mile times. If it was, it wouldn't be riding on 37 inch tires, which undoubtedly means you take a hit on acceleration. They said the focus was making sure this thing could sing at high revs while blasting dunes as long as the driver desires. It's made to crush the off-road world at speeds that would break your Camry to pieces. So while yes, it's down 2 horsepower versus the Ram TRX, it's also down 400 plus pounds. The Raptor R is carrying around 8.5 pounds of weight for every horsepower, versus the TRX 9.2, giving it a nearly 8% better power to weight ratio. This is also likely being generous towards the Ram TRX. The car magazines that have put it on a scale note a curb weight in the 6,800 pound region, so the real weight difference could be over 700 pounds. The Ram TRX does have one big advantage though. While it's carrying around significantly more weight, the price tag isn't quite as brutal. The V8 Raptor R starts at $109,145, nearly $30,000 higher than the Ram TRX's starting price. Somehow I still doubt they'll have any trouble selling every last one of them. Oh, and if you happen to be wondering, why is the first R in Raptor colored red on one side of the truck, but the last R is colored red on the other side of the truck? Well, Ford says it's done for symmetry, so that the red R was always at the back of the truck. That's also why you'll notice on the hood, the red R is at the back, and then on the other side, the red R is... Oh, uh, wait, hold on, it's at the front. Look, I don't make the rules. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.